Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel. And welcome back to October Lake in Planet 2, a project where we're building this really large wildlife park situated in the Canadian Highlands. In today's episode, we are going to be building a habitat for a giant anteater. If that does sound good to you, and if you do like today's video, please do leave a like down below. And of course, if you do want to see more Planet Zoo content, feel free to subscribe as well. I upload videos every Wednesday at 5pm UK time. With that intro out of the way, let's get started and talk about today's video. So, like I said, we're going to be building a habitat for this giant anteater, and it's going to be right next to where we built the uh, revamped otter habitat in the last episode. So I thought this would be a great place to introduce another South American animal, just like the giant um, otters themselves. And I thought, you know what? Another giant animal that ends with tur. Sure, why not? The giant anteater is an extremely fascinating animal. One of my favorites in the game. And I remember really enjoying um, building a habitat for it back when we did in uh, my previous zoo build, uh, Sanakov Land. And uh, if you want a full profile about the anteater species, I would uh, recommend you check out that video. I'll try and remember to put a link in the corner as well. That video, I did do a full species profile. Nowadays, I don't really do the full species profile, so I prefer to just kind of talk in a more casual setting. And I feel like that is a little bit easier for me. And also, I think the information kind of flows a bit more naturally. But of course, that's a really good um, resource as well if you want to learn a bit more about these animals because they really are fascinating. And because the habitat itself is relatively simple, I thought, why not take some time and talk about them again? Because honestly, they're fascinating animals and I personally really love them. Any mammal which really kind of um, breaks the mold and looks really odd like this, I am a huge fan of. So anteaters are myrmecophages. They eat, um, well, myrmecophage essentially just means anteater, literally. Uh, myrmeco is the kind of Latin prefix for ant, um, so like a lot of uh, ant species kind of have that in their name as well, and phasia kind of refers to like phage, it's Latin for like eating essentially, and their uh, kind of like full species name is Mamecophaga tridactyla, so tridactyla means uh, three fingers, so they do have these big three claws on their front legs, very very big claws, in fact they're very impressive, but really really uh, interesting creature here. They don't look like any other mammal really out there. And if you looked at their skeleton, you would not be able to tell what it is. Uh, besides the head. So the head, of course, it's incredibly uh, long snout, uh, easily a foot long. And uh, inside of it, they have this remarkably long tongue. It's incredibly long and can stick out so far to just like reach down into termite mounds and ant nests and get out any bugs they can. That tongue can get up to twice as long as its skull itself, which is crazy, so up to two feet long. Really, really impressive. And like I said, with the skeleton, you really wouldn't be able to tell what sort of animal it is, because in real life, they, the entity has this massive bushy tail, but in the skeleton, you can only see like a slender skeletal tail. And it just looks like, you know, someone took bits and pieces of other animals and put them together. Like the legs almost look like they're from like, you know, a primate in the skeleton. But then when you cover them in flesh and fur, they look almost like a bear's legs. It's just a fascinating animal all around. And the coloration adds to that really odd appearance as well, because they've got this beautiful uh, black band that runs up kind of the underneath of their neck, up their shoulders. And their feet also have these like really cute, like uh, black, almost like anklet areas. And it's just so cool to see, because if you look at just their front feet, it almost looks like they're like panda heads almost. Really, really beautiful. Uh, one interesting thing about their uh, their specific name, which is tridactyla, which means three fingers, is that they don't actually have only three fingers. They have five toes on each foot. And even on the front toe, um, they have like long claws on the first uh, three fingers, but they actually have five, um, five fingers there. So that's quite interesting. They do walk on their knuckles like gorillas do so that the claws are out of the way. But those claws are very powerful. They can use them to dig out termite nests, but also they can use them to kind of um, fend off predators. And in fact, I believe um, at some point they've uh, actually attacked people when they have, um, you know, been um, provoked or things like that. Of course, not necessarily a dangerous animal, but like all animals, very much deserving of respect and to, you know, we should respect the space and their 
boundaries and stuff like that, of course. Uh, in captivity, I'm not, I'm not super familiar with uh, how um, prevalent they are. I have personally not seen any in captivity yet. I would love to in the future. I, I think they're just incredible animals. Uh, they're quite solitary as well in nature in the wild. So in this habitat here, we're just putting in just the one. So I think they'll be uh, pretty happy on its own. But yeah, that's um, all incredible stuff for this animal. I genuinely think they're one of the more interesting ones in the game as well. They've got really cool behaviors that you'll see uh, in the cinematics. We managed to get some footage of them uh, scratching at one of the trees and also digging up one of the termite mounds. I think it ends up looking quite cool and you can see really that the team that made this uh, animal and just everyone who designed the animals at Frontier, they really put in the work to make these creatures feel really realistic and all these behaviors are really quite interesting. And I could just sit there and watch them all day honestly because they're really quite cool. Uh, besides the giant ant here, one animal I would love to see in the, uh, the future in the game is a tamandua or tamandua, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. But they're really cool animals which are very similar to like uh, anteater species but a lot more like small and uh, kind of like less fluffy, they're more like sleek. But you may have seen videos of them online where they just stand up on two legs. So just look, imagine like a mini anteater with like a slight, slightly more sleek body and um, they can also eat fruit more often and they're more arboreal, they do spend more time up in the trees and their tails are prehensile or partially prehensile which is quite different from the main anteater species, uh, the giant anteater. But they're super interesting creatures and I, I just think they're so adorable, I would love to see them. Uh, unfortunately, they are slightly more endangered because um, of deforestation and also um, they've been taken for the pet trade which is not great. But they're such cute animals and I've seen these guys I believe in captivity. Or have I? I might be confusing them with another animal. I think I've seen them in capture. I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, they're super cool and I would love to see um, these in the game as well. And the, the last actually type of anteater that I haven't mentioned is one which I am not super familiar with and this is called the, uh, the silky or pygmy anteater. These guys are tiny boys, super small. Really, really cute, really small animals. Uh, and they're just like barely like they barely weigh anything they're about a foot long total maybe a bit more and they weigh like half a kilogram <laughs> they're so tiny and I, I love them i can't imagine them in the game specifically just because of how small they are but i think they're adorable i i just learned about them like recently and i looked up pictures of them and they're so small and so cute absolutely adorable creatures anyways we've come through about two thirds on the way through the video Hope you enjoy learning a little bit more about anteaters. If you haven't watched that first video, of course, this might be new. If you have watched that first video, I hope this is still like a nice little, uh, you know, refreshing little reminder of what anteaters are like and some of the cool things about them because they really are such cool animals. I mean, imagine that, like having a tongue twice the length of your own head. Like, that's crazy. Uh, it's such a cool animal. And those claws as well are incredibly impressive. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're actually good swimmers as well, but... uh. Not 100% sure about that. I believe they are, but uh, living in like, you know, north, uh, sorry, the northern bit of South America, so around the Amazon basin and stuff, you know, you probably want to be a good swimmer. So many like deltas and rivers, the Amazon, so definitely um, worth having the ability to swim. And in fact, in the game, they can swim pretty decently. Uh, in my old park build, I put them in with a couple of tapirs and they have a big water uh, pool. And they swim quite often. I, I don't think that the anteater would swim as often in real life if they had a chance because they do have that big fluffy tail, which I imagine they wouldn't want to get wet so often. But this is all speculation on my part. Um, yeah, here we are actually doing the habitat itself. You may have noticed most of the episodes actually me figuring out the, um, the infrastructure elements. So usually I spend more time on the habitat itself, but I don't know why. I was just trying to figure out like the the logistics for that viewing area which I think comes out quite nice and then a little bit of this backstage area here which we've just done and made a ladder leading into the the otter habitat so that guys the staff can get in um they won't use it of course it's entirely just cosmetic but I think it looks good uh using quite a bit of foliage in here but 
not that not super diverse foliage, just really bushy foliage because the giant anteater being solitary animal is also very very shy and uh, it'll be good for them to have lots of cover. So lots of these brambly plants, lots of um, the arrow wood. I also use some bracken ferns and things like um, the diamond leaf willow and stuff like that to just give them lots of cover, lots of space to hide. Because I think that's a big um, key element in Zeus. Which is one of the trickier things to balance, I imagine, because you need to balance um, having the guests being able to actually see the animal, but giving the animal enough privacy to feel secure. So I think one of the good things is having foliage like this probably helps because while the animal can feel secure, guests can also have that added like immersive experience of having to kind of search for the animal and explore. And I really like that element in the zoo. I think one of the best feelings when I visit a zoo is like, searching for an animal amongst like thick undergrowth and then suddenly spotting it. That's always a great feeling for me. I love that. In fact, I tend to experience that a lot in like some specific habitats, like the tiger habitat at London Zoo. I always never see it at first. And then you suddenly see like the, the bright orange between the green, uh, the green bushes and stuff. And it's an amazing feeling. Just like, I think it's a great interactive bit for guests to explore. So yeah, I think that's a always an interesting consideration when building habitats like this. Final thing we're doing is we're making a very simple shading element here. Nothing too fancy, very very simple here with a few beams and then one of the pre-made roof pieces. So that's about it for that. But with that being said, that is uh, it for today's episode. A relatively short one, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Hopefully next week we can do a bit of a longer one. I'm starting to think about doing some of the bigger habitats, maybe a wolf one or a bison habitat. Those would be pretty cool, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, with all, with all that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I really, really appreciate your support and watching these videos and commenting down, commenting down below and stuff like that. It just all means the world to me, so thank you very much. Uh, do like the video if you did like it, of course. Uh, subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. And as always, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!